Amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight already, hasn't it? Amen. If you turn in your Bibles this evening to Mark chapter 2. I don't know if you've ever taken note of this before, but when you read through the exciting stories in the Gospels, there's always a story beneath the story. There's always what's happening in the forefront, but there's also a story happening in the background. And the story I'm going to read tonight is one of my favorite, very exciting stories. It excites folks from the time they're uh, in the nursery or a little older, Sunday school, the rest of the time. But I don't want to look at the foreground story tonight. I want to look at the background story. Amen. If you'd stand as our custom is, I want to read the story to you. It's, it's fairly short. And then I, I want to re-read of just a few verses, two or three verses that capture what we're talking about tonight. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1. And again he entered in Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. You see why this is a favorite, you know, you can't go very far. I, I like to preach on he's in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. I still believe that's the way to have church. He preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why did this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. We could shout there. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, and took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion right there's a message too tremendous passage but remember we're not looking at the story in the foreground but the story in the background and so i want us to revisit verse six seven and eight but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts why did this man speak blasphemies who could forgive sins but god only listen and immediately when jesus perceived or knew in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things? Never said them out loud. Didn't say them out loud. Why did you reason them in your hearts? Never spoke them. I want to preach tonight, and I hope it will be a help and encouragement, but he knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're thinking. Father, help us tonight. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit. You know every need that's represented in the house. You know how you want to help. You want to enable. Oh, God, you can change an attitude. You can change a heart. You can change a perspective, an outlook, God, tonight through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. We are not going to do this at this church but something that larger churches some of them are trying to do instead of folks saying out loud amen preach it brother give us more five more minutes please instead of people saying those things out loud they're allowing folks to text 
And their text then, as the preacher preaches, their text shows up behind the preacher on the screen. Now, they have to have a filter system involved. So as the preacher preaches, it'll show up behind him, amen. I don't, maybe we need to go to that. (laughs) Amen. Glory to God. Good point. Now, we don't have that system set up where you could text those, but I've often wondered, what if somehow, without folks really knowing it, we would have an apparatus that would pick up on the brain waves? Pick up on the brain waves and automatically project them on the wall. What folks were thinking during the preaching. Now, I'd like to believe that things would show up behind me like profound, (laughs) awesome, life-changing. But I'm afraid things would show up like, I'm hungry. (laughs) When is he going to get finished? Boring. That would be in all capitals, uppercase. But really, what would it be like if an apparatus was picking up brain waves and projecting them on the wall? Well, what an apparatus. It was Jesus Christ in a church service. He was picking up on the brain waves and reading them as clearly in his mind as if they were appearing on a screen behind the preacher tonight. Oh, hallelujah. He's a mighty Christ. I'm preaching tonight. He knows what you're thinking. We're looking at the story beneath the story. Here Jesus is, a house full of people. He's teaching. Now, I want to tell you from experience, I do see things that go on, but it's hard to really be preaching and catch everything that's going on. But Jesus caught it. He's preaching. I mean, we're we're having a lot of action here. The roof's being tore off, and they're letting an injured man down in front of Jesus, and Jesus is working a miracle. And through all of that, there are some of his enemies, the scribes, that are sitting over there reasoning unpleasant things, um, untruthful things in their hearts. And while in the midst of teaching, in the midst of the roof being torn off, in the midst of talking to that man's four friends, in the midst of raising that man off of his pallet and performing a miracle, Jesus catches, Jesus knows what's going on in their hearts that was all in the background. But Jesus knew what was going on in the background. What a Savior. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you tonight, with all that has been going on in this church service, the singing, the comments that were made, with all that was going on this whole time, Jesus has been picking up. Jesus has been understanding. Jesus has been knowing what each of us is thinking in this service, thinking in our hearts. Hallelujah. I don't know how you find that, that Jesus knows what you and I are thinking tonight. I want to tell you, he could do that because he was uniquely God. I know he was as much a man as you and I, but he didn't do that through psychic powers. He did that because he was God in the flesh. And the creator knows his creation. You know, some folks get carried away with this. They think the devil can read your mind, read your thoughts. I don't believe the devil can read your mind, read your thoughts. Of course, the devil doesn't have to read most people's thoughts. In most cases, most people just keep the devil informed on how things are going. with. He don't have to read their mind. People just let him know, I'm so discouraged today. Why does he need to read their mind? (laughs) I'm so depressed. He don't have to read their mind. People just tell them, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that preacher. I'm upset. I'm just, why does he have to read their mind? Beyond that, the devil's a good student of human behavior. I'm not going to go into this, but even just the last few days together, Sandra and I, we would spook one another out, not talking for several minutes, and then we both would know what the other one was thinking. How many has found that in your marriage? That's spooky. 
It's even more spooky when you start looking like each other. (laughs) The devil doesn't read minds. He just knows human nature. But I want you to know, Jesus reads the mind. Let me put it this way. Jesus reads the heart. Jesus knows what you're thinking. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And right in the middle of sharing a magnificent word, right in the middle of the wonder of a miracle being worked, there were those that were having thoughts that they shouldn't have. They were thinking along patterns they shouldn't think. Right in the middle. You know, I'm telling you, it's a marvel, but it happens. Right in the middle of a powerful church service. Right in the middle of a time of prayer when people are seeking the Lord. Right in the middle of song service. Right in the middle of worship. Right in the middle of God blessing others. And if you can imagine, right in the middle of the preaching, there are some thoughts that are entertained and some thoughts that people have that are astounding. And if you would be honest, you would say, yes, that's me at times. I know God's trying to move. I know God's speaking. But in the midst of it, there are these thoughts that keep coming to me they keep bombarding me they keep distracting me they keep bothering me these thoughts just keep rising up to the top and that's what Jesus was dealing with I want you to notice here that scripture never said they were reasoning in their minds but they were reasoning where? in their hearts now I'm not going to get in a long discussion of that what heart means in the Bible he wasn't talking about the muscle that pumped blood But I believe he used the word heart because the thoughts weren't just the processes of the gray matter. He used the word heart because the thoughts involved their feelings, what they were feeling, what they were experiencing, the emotions that they were have. The heart is not just passionless thoughts, but the heart includes the feelings and the stirred up emotions and the passions that are either caused by or generate the thoughts. And these thoughts were being turned over and over and these people's minds, these scribes' minds, they were stirred up, they were upset, they were bothered now here's the thing these scribes and we usually leave it here but these scribes were thinking wrong thoughts they were thinking thoughts that needed to be rebuked they were thinking thoughts that were just wrong and I know that's what Jesus was dealing with but the thing that I want to preach to you tonight yes Jesus knew those wrong thoughts Jesus knew those thoughts that needed to be rebuked but those aren't the only thoughts that Jesus knows he knows the thoughts of the struggling. He knows the thoughts of the hurting. He knows the thoughts of the confused. He knows the thoughts of those that are in despair. He knows the thoughts of those that are lonely. He knows the thoughts of those that don't feel like they can go on. It's not just the bad thoughts that he knows. He knows the thoughts of those he wants to help. Can you say man? He knows what you're thinking. Hallelujah. And that day, I don't believe Jesus was just aware of the bad thoughts, the culpable thoughts, the cruel thoughts of the scribes, the unbelieving thoughts or carnal thoughts. Jesus knew the thoughts of those that genuinely were in trouble and were having miserable thoughts and even scary thoughts. I believe Jesus knows the thoughts of all ages. Amen. A lot of times we say, to young people and our elders said it to us what in the world were you thinking we don't understand it but Jesus can understand the thoughts of a young person amen Jesus understands the thoughts of all ages the teenager, the child, the middle age, the elder Jesus knows the thoughts of all kinds of thoughts the happy thoughts, the sad thoughts, the discouraged thoughts the anxious thoughts, the worrisome thoughts He knows what you and I are thinking Jesus never has to ask You know, Sometimes when we were gone we would grow silent and one of us or the other would ask the other What are 
are you thinking? What are you thinking? I told you sometimes that works with spouses, but not all the time. Have you ever seen someone deep in thought? I mean, you could tell by their eyeballs they were thinking about something. Amen. You know that you knew they were that something was going on there. Amen. And we have to ask them, what were you thinking? Jesus never has to ask me what I'm thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what you're thinking. With all that was going on that day. Amen. Amen. There were thoughts that people were having and Jesus knew about them. And so I want to take that from that time long ago and bring it up tonight. There's been a lot of things happening. There's been word already preached. There's been testimonies. There's been songs. There's been the presence of the Lord felt. There's been prayer and there's been worship. But the question I want to ask, what would have been some of the thoughts that people were thinking tonight that Jesus knew about? What would some of those thoughts be like? And I believe the reasoning, the thinking in the heart, as it was with these men, will be often in the form of a question, just like it was then. I read it to you, but their thoughts, their reasoning, came in the form of a question. They reasoned in their hearts, verse 7, it came out as a question. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And I believe our thoughts that we have when we're in the presence of the Lord and we're seeking to draw near and we have the worship and we hear the word, I believe our thoughts often come as questions. I'm going to give you just a few of those. I don't know what you're thinking. I just tried to think about what you might be thinking. But Jesus knows what we've been thinking. Here's a sampling of questions, things that Jesus could be picking up tonight and reading in people's hearts. Here's one question. How am I going to face this? How am I going to face this? There's something this week. There's something impending. There's something you're dealing with. Your question not is how am I going to face Nobody else heard that question, but Jesus heard it. Another question is, will I ever not be lonely? I'm so tired of being lonely. I'm so tired of not feeling like I fit in. I'm so tired of feeling that I don't have friends. Will I ever not be lonely? Will it always be like this? Another question is, how are we going to pay that bill? You say that's unspiritual. Maybe so. But I'm telling you, when you got big bills, you can't hardly get them off your mind. Amen. You might not have mentioned it to your neighbor, but Jesus heard it in the heart tonight. How are we going to pay that bill? Doesn't anyone understand? Doesn't anyone understand what I'm going through? Doesn't anyone understand what I'm experiencing? Another question that might have been in someone's heart tonight is will I ever overcome that temptation? I've tried and I failed. I've tried and I failed this week. Will I ever get the victory? Will I ever overcome that temptation? Again, I don't know what the thoughts are, but Jesus knows them. He reads the heart. Will I ever be set free? Oh, I would love to be free of that thing. I would love, but will I ever be set free? What if I lose my job is another question. Why do I feel like I don't? That should say don't. Why? Yeah, that's. I got it right there. Why do I not feel like I love him or her anymore? What does it feel like the love is gone? The passion is gone. Another question might be, amen, what does it feel like? Or why does it feel like no one wants to talk to me? Another question, how could I have done such a thing? That was crazy. It was stupid. I knew better. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have said the word stupid. Amen. Well, how could I have done such a thing? That might be the thought that's going on that Jesus reads. Why always me? Why always me? Why now? Why not someone else? Amen. Do you ever wish that God would kind of spread trouble out a little more evenly. It seems to all come to your house. Amen. Why me? Questions that people have and thoughts that they have. Maybe there are other questions. Am I really saved? I know I'm in church. I know I'm singing, but am I really saved? Another question is the prophets ask it. The psalmists ask it. But does God really love me? Does God really love me? Another thought might be, why can I get healed? Or another one, Will I really ever make it? Uh, Another one, why do I not feel anything in this service tonight? Other people are talking about feeling the presence of the Lord. Why do I not 
not feel anything. Another question, why do I feel so attracted to the world? Another question, why do I feel like I'm missing out on something? Another question, is it really worth it? Is it worth the battles? Is it worth the difficulty? Amen. Just a few more questions here. Why couldn't I look like so and so? Maybe young people more here. Why couldn't I have lived in a place like that? Why do they seem to have only good things happen to them and everything bad happens to me? I'm talking about in the middle of church, in the middle of God moving. Amen. We have all kinds of thoughts. I might not listed yours tonight because I can't know your thoughts, but the Lord knows your thought. He knows what's bothering you. He knows what's troubling you. He knows what the oh hallelujah now you can look at that uh, as a negative thing but I think it's a positive thing that our God knows the most intricate inner workings of, of our heart and our mind and our life and our emotions and our thinking and everything about us he knows it tonight the one closest to you may not know but he knows I want you to notice the Bible says twice that they were reasoning in their hearts. The word reasoning means thinking the thing out, trying to figure it out. They kept thinking it out, but they kept coming up with the wrong conclusion because even though they were reasoning correctly, they had left out one of the facts. They had one of their facts wrong. They were reasoning, how can this man say to that man on the pallet, your sins are forgiven you because only God can forgive sins. You know what? Their reasoning was right, but their facts were wrong. Their reasoning was right, Brother Brock. Only God can forgive sin. But their facts was wrong. They looked at him and thought he was only a man, but he was God. If they'd only got that fact into it, they could have got the right conclusion. Oh, hallelujah. We sit and we reason and we don't have all the facts and our reasoning looks correct. Amen. But we don't have all the information. We don't have all the data. Therefore, we get it wrong. I'm just telling you, in the midst of your reasoning, in the midst of your trying to figure it out, lift your heart up to God and say, God, you know what I'm thinking. You know how I'm reasoning and you know I don't have all the data. I don't have all the information. So I'm not going to try try to figure this out on my own. I'm not going to try to reason it out on my own. I'm going to put my faith in you and my trust in you and let you do the figuring, God. And then recently I received an email that was written with great reasoning justifying what I know the Bible says is wrong. And I got finished reading the email and I said there's a lot of reasoning there. But the conclusion is wrong because it didn't take into account the facts of God's Word. Amen. Reasoning. I used to give us an illustration years ago in the ancient world, just prior to Christ, on certain islands, a certain island in the, in the Mediterranean. Mothers, one of the first things they would do, Sister Tricia, when they had a baby, they'd go get some lice off the the family dog and put it on their little infant just load their baby up with lies you know why they did that because they reasoned it out they noticed that everybody that had malaria did not have lies so they concluded that lice was keeping folks from getting malaria and so they put lice on their babies to keep their babies from getting malaria it wasn't that lice prevented malaria it was that malaria prevented lice. They had their reasoning backwards. And I'm telling you, if you stew, you and I stew on our inner thoughts, alone our troubling thoughts, we're going to come to the wrong conclusion every time. What we need to do is say, Lord, I can't figure it out, but you know what I'm thinking, and you know what I'm struggling with, and I'm going to put my trust in you and in your word. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Amen. Here's some of the faulty reason. We begin to reason. It sounds like good reasoning to us. We, we say to ourselves, I can't because of this. Another way we begin our faulty reasoning, yes, but. Oh, I hear that so often. Yes, I know God can do anything. Yes, I know God loves me. But. And then we nullify everything we said we knew. Another faulty reasoning is just the what if reasoning. 
Oh, we begin to trust in the Lord, but we begin to, what if this happens? What if that happens? Faulty reasoning. Amen. What about this? I know, but. I know, but. It's different for me because. And we reason our way out of faith. But Jesus knew their thoughts. And only Jesus knew their thoughts. And he revealed to them that he knew them. I mean, they were sitting there. I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be... <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of frightening to you if just right now you you were thinking, I wish there was a Dairy Queen nearby so I could get me a large vanilla dip cone. And I stopped right there and I pointed my finger at you and said, Brother Dale, you just thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a Dairy Queen nearby where I could get a large vanilla cho- di- a cone dipped in chocolate? Wouldn't that be a little bit scary? I think it would. You know, I was at a place one time and this man everyone came to see him because you know he did some prophesying and he was up prophesying and he's pointing at folk his finger folks saying god's going to bless you god's going to do this for you god's going to oh folks were sitting up in their chair you know point at me point at me god's going to bless you all of a sudden he whirled around to a preacher on the platform and said god said you've got sin in your heart you're committing adultery you think you've got it hidden but god knows it Nobody wanted to point a finger after that. Everybody's hiding in front of them, one in front of them. Amen. But I want you to know, not only does the Lord know, did the Lord know, He let them know that He knew. Have you ever had the Lord let you know that He knew? Sometimes, sometimes it's even through the preaching. I've marveled sometimes knowing that it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Someone will come after me to me after church and say, Pastor, you just preached that because you knew that I was going through this and that I was saying this and I was thinking this. And number one, I didn't know that they were going through that. And I look at them and say, you just told on yourself because I, I never knew that. And number two, I can look back through my notes and think back through my sermon and I don't ever remember saying that. But the Lord was letting them know that He knew. Hallelujah. Oh, if they would have only if those scribes would have only listened they would have thought to themselves how did he know what we were thinking he's got to be more than a carpenter oh and he was he was God he knew the innermost thoughts of, of their heart over and over in the Old Testament God told the nation Israel I know your suffering I know your slavery I know your pain I know I just want you to know tonight that he knows and if you will let him he will let you know that he knows Hallelujah. But Jesus not only revealed to them that he knew their thoughts, he purposely spoke and moved in such a way that if they wished, they could have believed and be changed. He didn't just say, I know your thoughts. He did something about it that if they had listened to what he'd done, said and done, they could have been changed. He said, you're sitting there reasoning your hearts that that man, that carpenter, shouldn't have looked at that man on the pallet and told him his sins are forgiven him. And you reason that he shouldn't have done that because only God can forgive sins. Your reasoning was wrong. You're missing something here. But he said, if that's the way you want to reason, and you think that it's easier to say your sins are forgiven you because nobody can see whether they're forgiven or not, and it's hard for someone to say, rise, you know, rise up from your bed of affliction and walk. But if you're thinking that way, then I'll meet you where you're thinking. And he turned to the man and said, rise, take up your bed and walk. He answered their thoughts. And if they had heeded, their life would have been changed. I want you to know, I believe the Lord, and even in this service, not only does he know what you and I are thinking, but if we will listen, he will answer our thoughts and meet the needs of our hearts. How many believes we serve a Christ like that? He knows what you're thinking. We do not tell Jesus our thoughts to inform Him. He already knows. We tell Jesus our thought to confess our thoughts and to acknowledge that He knows. You've never shot God. You know, you can come to me and say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. And tell me and i be shocked. But you'll never shock God. You can't go to God and say, Now, God, you don't know what I'm going through. (laughs) But I want you to know, He already knows it. But He likes for us to confess what our need is and to acknowledge that He's powerful enough to know what we're going through. 
He knows what we have need of before we ask. But he wants us to ask, to confess our need, and to acknowledge his greatness. Would you come music tonight? I want to ask you, again, we don't have the apparatus. Amen. But what have you been thinking? Sometimes I joke with someone who will start a conversation. I've been thinking. And I'll respond, that's dangerous. But you know, in the house of God, whatever you're thinking, it's not dangerous unless you leave and don't let God help you and address and speak to you. What have you been thinking? What about when the Spirit moved tonight? What about when the Word was preached tonight? What about when we were worshiping? What kind of thoughts were you having? I want to give you some instruction here. Whatever you were thinking, I'm talking about folks that are serious about meeting with God and getting help from God. Whatever you were thinking, let Jesus talk to you and change your way of thinking if it was wrong. If your way of thinking was wrong, let him change your way of thinking tonight. How many believe he can do it? I'm not going to revisit tonight's, or uh, tonight, I'm not going to revisit this morning's sermon. But the word direct mean, meant to straighten out. Sometimes, if we'll let him, the Lord will straighten out our thoughts. I, I'm gonna, let's just be honest. I, how many knows there's been times in your Christian experience you were just thinking all wrongly about it? You're just reasoning wrongly about it. If that's true tonight, let the Lord help you and change your way of thinking. Just begin to pray and say, Jesus, you know how I've been thinking. You know how I've been reasoning. And Jesus, tonight I'm asking you to straighten out my thinking. Help me to think correctly. Enable me to think as I ought. And help me in the very depths of my heart, which you see and read. Help me, Lord, to think your thoughts Think your truth and be straight now. Amen. I know it's rhetorical, but I want to ask you, how many really believes what I was preaching tonight, that he knows our hearts? He knows our thinking. Oh, don't you like it when he straightens out? You know, I've seen people, would you stand? I've seen people make foolish mistakes, mess up their lives, and they'll say, my thinking just got so out of whack. I, I wasn't, I couldn't think straight. He knows what you're thinking. Hallelujah. Let him straighten things out. We can't put it up on the wall, but what are you thinking? Right now, this moment, what are you thinking? I mean, don't tell me. I'm just between you and the Lord. But what are you thinking? What is your struggle? What is that, that, that pattern of reasoning that's got you in discouragement? That pattern of reasoning that's taken your faith? That pattern of reasoning that's led you away from God and back towards the world? What is that pattern of reasoning? Whatever it is, God knows. And again, I, I, I'm saying Jesus isn't just talking about condemnable thoughts like the scribes had in this story. He's talking about honest and earnest thoughts that people have genuine confusions genuine struggles genuine difficulty but whatever kind of thought it is he knows it whatever else is going on he knows it and he loves you enough to want to help you tonight amen if you'd like to meet with the lord and just have him deal with the innermost of your heart tonight would you come begin to fill the altars and say oh god you know my thoughts i'm coming to you lord Amen. Lord, help me to think as I ought to think. Help me to feel as I ought to feel. Help me to choose as I ought to choose. Lord, you know my thoughts. You know my heart. Straighten out my faulty reasoning. Straighten out my faulty reasoning. 